Wednesday night, Everton away, under the lights. David Moyes returning to his old stomping ground. It's a must-win game for West Ham now. It was a great game on Friday night with the uh, atmosphere against Leicester. Unfortunately, we didn't get the win. Uh, we move on. This is the Everton preview, and welcome back to Orange United YouTube channel. I'm joined tonight by Matt, returning again once again, and a newcomer in the face of Marcus, fellow admin. He's raring to go look at him. All right. Okay. So, this is going to be a quick 30 second. We're going to go quickly go on to um, a few talking points and uh, here and there, but generally, um, we're looking at Everton away on Wednesday night. Um, Taking from Friday, um, Matt, what was your take on the general because this is the game? Um, how do you think we played? Um, do you think we should have won the game? And uh, how do you think the crowd reacted for the first time? Would you get out of that one? The crowd was obviously electric. That was the best atmosphere we've had. I think that even beats like the Tottenham game last season. The, the atmosphere when the crowd got going. Controversial. For that, what was it like, for that twenty minute point in the second half when the crowd got going. Yeah, it was better than Tottenham, but we've now got to take that to every game. But like, yeah, we set a no, exactly. standard for ourselves now. We talk about the players setting a standard. The fans have now set a standard for themselves. Like we can't now go back to being dead yeah. silent for ninety minutes. We've shown right. that if we get going, we can get behind the players because you saw the players were running further. Yeah, yeah. Harder. They fed yeah, off. It seemed, it seemed to energise them a bit, didn't it? Yeah, totally. What was your take on it, Marcus? Well, same as what Matt just said, really. I think the fact that in a non-district game against Leicester, you know, they're hardly a rival of ours. You know, a lot of the chips have been down for us to generate that kind of atmosphere. Shows that that stadium can be whatever we want it to be, and that part of the problem may well have been fans' negativity until now. Not much controversial, but the fact that you could see the players pick up that extra yard pace. I think quite a few of them acknowledged it in their interviews afterwards. Shows that yeah. if we can bring that kind of atmosphere to every single game. That place can become the fortress that a lot of us believed Upton Park was. Yeah, no, I totally agree. But the thing I've always said about the, the stadium is it is the capability. Um, it has it, Upton Park was Upton Park. It'll always have its um, you know its fond memories, and you know it was a cauldron. You know, it was a hard place for any away team to come to us. At, 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 you know, at times. But um, I think taking from my take on it, I was at the game, and honestly, I had goosebumps. When the crowd started going, it was you know it, it was it was shivers down the spine. It was amazing, um, <coughs> but the first half it didn't seem like it was many songs. It was just kind of willing the players to actually give it a go and get in there, get stuck in, and get something out of it. Um, and I think after the first half an hour, the players, the, the fans just got bored of telling them to keep going, <laughs> get going, and just like okay, we can't see you anymore. It's down to you now, lads. Um, and in the second half, um, there was a lot of. Uh, back and forth uh, with the Leicester away fans and um, after a while we just thought no we're, we're going to add this now we're sick and tired of this it's one all we need to give them I, think, I think I think what you just said there I think that helps sometimes and I think that's probably why the atmosphere at away games is so good because mm. it's that back and forth you've got to have something to bounce off of I think you know if your away fans are making no noise sometimes as a home support you don't necessarily feel you need to because you don't no. need to drown them out uh, away games and, you want to try and overpower the home crowd and, and drown them out and I think actually we we probably bought the away atmosphere Two home against Leicester, and that's probably because, as you say, their fans tried to outsing us, and, uh, and it all went from there. Yeah, no, it's fair enough. Point. I'm also away games. You are normally pissed more than you are at home, so it does, <laughs> it does help being a bit more drunk. Um, you, know, you, you say that Matt mentioned the uh, Tottenham atmosphere earlier. I can only assume it was good because I was so drunk during the game. I can't remember anything about it. <laughs> it's a very, very fair point. To be fair. I think I might have been the same myself actually. Um, but yeah, so, uh, but I mean. I don't kind of look I'm all for supporting your team and everything like that but for me personally I think the team has to give you something to support as well you can't keep constantly applauding someone and clapping someone when you don't think they're giving 100% or you don't think they're playing up to their potential um, and I think that with David Moyes the impetus that he's got with you, you saw the difference in, in and out of it um, especially who for me personally was my man of the match it was a completely different performance for himself he looked very ready to go and he, he, he was almost faultless within the game um, and maybe the impetus that, that Moyes and his backroom staff have got it's, it's going to change the uh, change the game change the momentum for, for the club hopefully we go from there um, we're not going to talk too much about the Leicester game because the review's already been done um, we do want to talk about the uh, Everton game because it is a huge game it is a massive game um, 
they've been a big bit of a bogey team over the years, mainly due to the fact that Lukaku couldn't stop scoring against us. He loves scoring goals against us. But he's gone now. I mean, in some ways, he'll probably still find a way to try and get a goal against us. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> even at that United. But, uh, <coughs> you know, we, uh, we still live in fear of the guy. Um, but, yeah, they're obviously looking for um, a new manager uh, right now. But it currently stands as David Unsworth. Um, and I think we can all sympathise with Unsworth in the fact that he's a, he's a club man at Everton. Um, he's trying to do his best, but he's just not cutting it. Um, and it's a bit like kind of when I think Trevor Booking took us over years back, um, almost probably about 14 years ago now, and went down. It was the last thing he wanted for us to get, to get relegated. Uh, but unfortunately, that's the way that Everton are probably going if it keeps going worse. And they're being linked today with um, Sam Allardyce, who, of course, West Ham would have fond nightmares of in his, in his time at the club. Um, if he, if a miracle does happen for Everton and a nightmare happens for us and he gets selected um, for the game against us, do we think that they're going to have what we should have had at Watford, which is a new manager at Is that going to go against us or is that going to be something? I think, that, yeah. yeah, I think so. I think it's very difficult to predict the outcome of a game at the moment because a lot will hinge on whether Allardyce is appointed because if he is I think he is a kind of manager that comes in and gives him a boost I think a lot of the Everton players know they've got it easy under David Unsworth he doesn't strike me as being particularly strict or stern with the players probably similar in a way to Bilic was I think they probably respect him but they don't play out of fear for him and sometimes I think in football you need that if Allardyce is coming in they will know that they've got to up their game and it's just typical that thing will come against us. It's very you ironic. Know. It's very ironic as well. It's, it's, just... yeah, it's typical and it's ironic at the same time. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, I mean, I feel sorry for Unsworth because like, I, I watched the game yesterday and they were talking to Henri like, before the game at half-time and mm. he was talking about Morales. Obviously, he's like the, the assistant now for Belgium, Henri. Yeah. And he said, like, Morales' his attitude when he's away at Belgium is fantastic. Doesn't argue, doesn't complain, does all the running. So like he was sort of trying to defend Morales, but yeah. I know a couple like he's been in and out of that Everton side because Unsworth is apparently I don't know his training ground bust up or effort on the pitch. Right. But I know him and Schneiderlin have both been singled out, and like Marcus said, mm-hmm. you sort of think like is that sort of a village effect where the players yeah. don't respect Unsworth. No, it could be. I mean, it's always a thing you don't want to go too hard, or you want to try and get the best edge you can in a, in a club you are. But the ironic thing there about Belgium is the fact that they, they're managed by a former Everton manager. Um, <laughs> for, you know, no, I, these I, days, who isn't? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and apparently he was crap for Everton. Um, so, you know, in the end, the fans are standing against him as well. Um, but if we, I mean, we, we, we're looking at Everton, but of course, I think you can't, you know, go past the previous game I mean we're looking at standout players it wasn't the best performance given ever and let's, let's not kid ourselves it wasn't the most immaculate performance oh, that, that performance yesterday was like that was that was our Brighton 3-0 game they had yesterday it, mm. was, it was awful was I mean the only reason they got a goal is because Sigerson pulled out a worldie from 25 yards <laughs> that is yeah. I think it hit the bar twice and hit the post and went in like, it's, that's, that's, that's when you kind of haven't got luck and you have got luck um, I mean, you look at, for example, the, the two goals that they conceded right in with, with Austin. It was almost mirror image. Both goals I mean, were very, that, very similar positions. That's, like, if they do get Sam in, they won't do that. Because, I mean, that's criminal. You like Austin, Making a mistake yeah. is one thing, but not learning from it. No. Mm. And, I mean, I, exactly. I watched it, and you could see on the TV, like, Charlie Austin was literally standing in the exact same spot, <laughs> five minutes right. past two headers. Yeah. And yeah. you sort of look at that, and you think, that's probably the sort of thing we do. So I mean tomorrow. <laughs> I reckon tomorrow, like tomorrow Wednesday, I reckon the game will literally. It's going to be like five four. Yeah, it's either going to be a high scoring draw or nil nil, isn't it? You know, yeah, like, it's, either, either defence or poor strikers are going to come out on top. I mean, they lost Baines and Keane yesterday, so mm. chances are neither of them are playing on Wednesday, which meant they played a they played a right back <laughs> and left back, and they played Aaron Lennon at right back. And he got torn apart in the second half, Aaron Lennon, because they just targeted him because he's not a defender. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, well, it, uh, again, if, if if that is the case for our game, then our, then potentially it would swing in our balance because our defence is poor. But if they've got a poor defence without two key men, you know, well, talk, 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 talk,
Baines felt his calf pop, so he's probably definitely not playing on Wednesday. Yeah, if your if your calf's popped, you're, Keane, you're out for a few Keane, weeks. he was a bit sort of miffed about, and Everton fans think he just sort of skived out and thought, "Fuck this, we're having a bad game. I don't want to play anymore." <laughs> I, th- I think. Then, I think were, yeah, is that the sort I, of I, player I, you want? Might have had a concussion, and then they were saying he might have hurt his knee. But under, I think we know what was going on, and he just sort of got pulled. Two off very and different areas to be injured, isn't it? <laughs> you can't confuse <laughs> I, I, I those two injuries. I, I, I think when you hear something pop, you don't just hear it, you feel it, and you just writhe around in pain, and it's something you don't just go, yeah, I might have felt that a little bit. Yeah, you know if you're injured or not, and you're going really off. Like, did he, yeah. like, Baines felt his leg go. He felt his calf go, so he went. But Keane, they weren't really sure. They were like, is it a concussion? Is he hurt his knee? I mean, surely you'd know which one it was. I, I, I honestly thought uh, Anatovic uh, uh, was almost near death at the World Watford game. <laughs> it was, maybe I, it was I, confident, I, I like, that's like, broke his arm. Yeah, I thought, he'd he'd done, yeah I thought he'd have done something bad. Yeah, I, I, I was a few pints in down the pub, and I thought to myself, oh, he, he just wants out here. You know, just he just got to the point of thinking, any, any more, any more things can go wrong. The thing was, but I, wanted... he, I don't know why he didn't get an Oscar for it because fucking Moyes bought it hook line sinker as well. well yeah, yeah, he took, yeah, apparently he didn't want to be bought off. Because if I was watching the game at home, and like they said on Sky Sports, like now was sitting on the touchline, like looking at his hand, and the physio was like giving him the magic sponge. Yeah. And Moyes had already yeah. made the sub. He was like, no, he's coming off. Like he's probably thinking, oh, we got to protect him. We need him for like the long term. Was that which was like no, I want to go back on. Yeah, no, it, it, it was one. Just... It was one of them. It was it was a crazy turn of events, and and you know I, I genuinely thought he wanted off, and you hear he wants back on, and it's like what the hell is going on with the kid? Um, but talking of defences, um, we're going to go back onto that now. Um, we 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 last two games we've conceded very early goals um, in the first sort of ten minutes or so, and it's it's something that we don't kind of seem to be learning from very much. Um, there's been a lot of criticisms of our back line. I personally am a fan of Winston Reid. Um, I think he's carried uh, defence for, a, 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 you know, kind of almost since he's come to the club, if you like. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. Um, and it just happens to be our luck that we sign a Juventus defender, an Italy international, you know, Bonner, um, and who, like every other player in that season, had a great season his first, you know, last, his last season at Upton Park. Um, but since then, I think like every other player as well, his performances haven't been up to scratch. He's been at fault for a number of fouls and penalties, etc. Uh, et he's, he's got this clumsy um, persona to him. Uh, do we take out a player of his career standings, you know, former Juventus <coughs> player, Italy international, and bring in someone like Declan Rice, who is, yes. um, you know, Definitely. much like Martinez, there's cries for him to go into the into the team um, we've got this kind of impetus of when are we actually going to play this academy boy these academy boys that are full of you know success grind that win scoring goals for fun and we we reckon that our team that is struggling in the Premier League can do better than them um, is it time for Bonner to go? Yeah definitely yeah, yeah I mean I wouldn't play him tomorrow they, they, they only play no, one up front of them like if you watch the game they played on the weekend mm. they played the kid Calvert Lewin up front, and he literally did nothing. Like the the, the Southampton centre back literally just sat on the halfway line because they were like, "There's no one else up front. It's yeah. one kid. He can't. He's not a he's not a target man. He's running in behind." Mm, and they mm. Everton were. And that's that's where I think the ball long. And that's where I think Bonner would be disastrous because I think the problem with Bonner is he switches off, lack of concentration. Yeah. yeah. And even in that, like you mentioned earlier about you know you thought he played quite well in that first season with us, the last season at Upton Park. I'm not even so sure he did. My season ticket was kind of level with a penalty box, only a couple of us from the front. And whether he was playing with Reed or Collins, they had to talk him through the game. You could hear them physically telling him where to be, where to go, to switch on. Yeah, you know, to yeah. To, to, keep, to keep it. He was up. doing that. He was doing that on Friday night when it was an injury. Mm. One of the million, one of about ten thousand injuries that, that stopped the game <laughs> on Friday night, which got more annoying than the West Brom game. Um, you could see that Reed and Bonner were talking to each other, mm-hmm. and Reed was actually doing his nuts. He was yeah, actually going, yeah. big arm movement, saying, You've got to do this, you've got to do that. And the Bonner was standing there, like a glazed face, going, I want to it's take like this. It was like the end of headlights, like, wasn't it? Who like, what you know, saying? Like, yeah. well, you, you're saying? You look at that instant where Leicester could and probably should have had a penalty when Masuaku took out their player. And Bonner was just stood there watching. He didn't right. react, he didn't move. It's like, he, he, he didn't uh, I think he's a liability. <laughs> yeah, was, I, think, like, I think he's an absolute liability, and I would. Oh shit! I should have been there. <laughs> yeah, oh, the, the, the no. exactly. But he didn't. He didn't. Where's with Reed? Yeah. Reed will Honestly, sometimes get caught out of position, but will bomb back and make that tackle. Well, Bonner, yeah. I don't think has got the desire to do it, and that's why I would play Reed. He yeah. gets in the team because he's pace. Because 
on the scale of a centre back in the Premier League, or Bonner's actually pretty quick. He is, he is. He's very, mean, that, a lot of pace to him. All he's pretty much got. I mean, the yeah. funny thing is, obviously, but, I went to the game against Leicester, mm. and I saw the goals back on Sky. And mm. if Obama had actually completely had an air shot on that cross, <laughs> they wouldn't have scored. Like no, he actually no, managed to no. slice it off his instep into the path of the defender. I've actually watched that again, and I actually I think I can see the slightest of deflections off Reed when Vardy plays the ball in. Even the slightest, it, it's not an excuse, but it is something there. But when you, but when you, the thing that I've learned about Obama is that he's very good in the air. I've never really seen him lose a header against the, against the centre forward. He does come up with a goal from the corner or two, like he did against Spurs the other week. And it's one of them things where we've got so many. I think I think this team is kind of full of players who are good at one or two things, and then they're average mm. or poor at everything else. Um, yeah, I think with Ogbonna as well. Uh, you know, I think if the ball's whipped in, either attacking or defending, yeah, he does the right thing. I think it's one of those mm. things where he's a good player on his instincts, but sometimes you see a long ball hoofed up towards our defenders, and you know he's watching the ball, and he, he seems to almost come too far forward and get caught under it. It's almost like yeah. if he's got too much time to think about it, he makes a wrong decision. If it's pure instinct, he'll do the right thing, and I think yeah. that's probably the problem. And, and, and certainly, if if he's going to be not needed for a lot of the game on Wednesday, if, if Everton are only going to play one up front, you know, and we're going to play a yeah. high line, he's prone to switching off, and and I. I I just think I'd, that he's got a mistake in him in every game at the moment, and I, I don't think he can be I'd be tempted to play risked. Collins, to be honest. If he's fair, apparently, yeah. Apparently Collins, Collins trained today with Antonio, and they're both training. Yeah, they're yeah, training. Collins has been training for like, mm. he's been training for about a week. He's been training over a week mm. now, Collins. That's if if he's fit, I'd rather probably play him. I think it depends on on your formation. Because they, yeah. they play I've, the same sort of formation we play, mm. which is that that four two three one. And if they're going to play that, and you only got one centre forward. I'd be tempted to play him, or even like you said, play Rice. Mm. Rice can play the ball out. It's, so, it's so one of the. Def- Reed can defend yeah. against the centre forward, and Rice exactly, can yeah, ball forward. Yeah, if Reed, Reed man marks, and Rice can sweep up behind. We were. Um, there's something that there's there's been there's big there's always huge debates over who should play in our team and and who should go where. Um, I think that there's. For me personally, if, you, if, you, if we're talking defence, we'll move from defence and we'll go to midfield and go up front and we'll go along that way. We'll cover the centre backs. I've left out the goalkeeping situation purely based on the fact that I think we can all agree that Hart must have something in his contract that says he's going to play all league games. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I'm pretty it's, sure. It's, it's, unless it's like a catastrophe, like I'm pretty sure he's going to play. I, th- I think personally, I- I'm not really a massive fan of, of Hearts, and I think apart from the Crystal Palace See, game, he has some really poor cool things. I've, I've got to be honest. I've, I've heard a report though that Moyes has been really impressed with Adrian in the training ground, and that he is considering making a change for Everton, if not for Everton, right. and certainly maybe even uh, the next game, which might um, be the next game. It's Man City away, isn't it, on next Sunday? For those, for, by the way, for those that don't know, the viewers watching, uh, Marcus is basically our our ex West Ham United employee. Um, we get a lot of uh, <laughs> we, we, get, we, get, we get we get a lot. Of I'm, I'm not quite sure about that, but uh... Uh, well, I can see it anyway. Let's put it that way. Because <laughs> I've got a lot of my information from yourself. Um, uh, yeah, but if he if he goes for Adrian, I'm all for it because I've had enough of Hart personally. Um, I think I, I don't think Hart's done a lot wrong though. I know people, I think people, again, everything with West Ham at the moment comes down to people's high expectations. And I think people thought Hart was going to come in and somehow make a difference. I think he's, I think he's flattered to deceive. He's not been the outstanding player we thought he would be. But there's not a lot he's done wrong either. I mean, the goal, I know it looks bad when a goalkeeper's left stationary, but against Leicester, that, that ball just came completely across him, wrong footed him, weight on the other foot. I don't think there's many goalkeepers that would have done anything about that one. No, on I think I'm not sure he's done a lot wrong. I think, in fairness, I think he thought, like, like everyone else in the ground, did, he thought Obama was just going to clear it. Well, yeah. Which is probably <laughs> maybe a bad way to think, because maybe, you should, maybe yeah, maybe. in goal for us at the moment, you should be fucking expecting say, yeah. a defender to make it. must have met Ogbonna before. Because <laughs> <laughs> obviously he set yeah. himself up, like, oh yeah, Ogbonna's cleared this. And he was on he was on his heels, he wasn't on his toes, and it just went, Oh, that's that's gone in. Yeah. I mean saying that, he done alright in the second half, the bits he had to do, but he didn't have to do much, he said that himself. Exactly. So um, I, of... I think 
But I think it's a case now that I think until he makes a mistake or he has like a really bad game, I don't think he'll drop it just because. No. You know, it's you can't just drop someone just because unless Adrian is like you said, unless he's played that much better than Harley <laughs> Trade. Which I yeah, apparently looks like he's caught the eye. It's the new manager thing, isn't it? Though, like new manager comes in and like Moy said, it's a clean slate. Everyone's up to it again. So mm-hmm. obviously Adrian's seen this and gone, oh, yeah, what a chance is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think and you, you can't fault think... Adrian for that when he's when he's come in in the cups, he's done well. Oh, he's done fantastic. I, I think the people and I think he'll do well against Man City next week, and if he's given a chance against Everton, I think he'll do well there. But I don't know if Hart's done enough to be dropped. Personally. I like Adrian. I prefer Adrian, if I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah same here, same here. But at the but moment, I, I, I don't I, know if Hart's done enough to be dropped. Yeah, I think that is the thing. Like, I think if if he's done enough to be dropped, Adrian's there to step in. Mm-hmm. But it's a sort of case of until Ad, like until you actually say, because I mean, let's be honest. I think 95% of the goals we concede aren't Joe Hart's fault. No, like, I, I I maybe look at like that second goal against Watford. He probably could have done better. Yeah, yeah, and second but, goal against I mean, like Brighton. Said, you're talking like. But... What we, I think we said what we've conceded 20, 25 goals this season and I maybe put like three of them at the feet of yeah. Joe Hart and 22 and yet, what, but the rest of the are we are we being potentially critical because when you look at our opposition on Wednesday they no. they no. conceded what one less than us and everyone's making Jordan Pickford out to be the next best thing I mean they spent you know, 30, so, 4, 34 yeah. million pounds on Jordan Pickford yeah 30 million quid and he's, he's not giving them that stability you know we, we were saying that we were hoping for more for more from Hart but surely Everton fans must be expecting more from a defence where they've paid 30 million quid on a keeper and 25 million pound on Keane that's enough and you know yes, it, we have way. our defensive frailties but so do they and, and I think we've got to make sure we expose that on Wednesday I think that's the thing you always say for a goalkeeper he's only good as like the defenders in front of him yeah we, we, and in we, turn we, I we think we only brought uh, in Zabaleta on a free whereas like you said they spent 25, yeah. 26 million on Keane from Burnley yeah and again, I think you're right. The keeper's only as good as a defence in front of him, and I think the defence is only as good as a protection in front of them. And so far this season, we've not given them that. If we'd have signed Carvalho, different story, but we didn't. And it just so happens to coincide with Noble potentially his legs going. You've got Obiang and Kiate, who are probably having their worst periods of form they've had for us. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, yeah. our defence is going to be exposed time and time again. My, my, I think my thing regarding Joe Hart is the fact that. I think for, throughout his career, he's got this kind of, you know, the England number one uh, label hanging over him. He's played at the top level, uh, Man City, Champions League. Um, and uh, it's not about he hasn't done anything wrong. It's about it's You're expecting doing it more right. because of what he's done. I'm, expect, I'm expecting more, for not just what he's... I don't think he's done anything. I really, honestly, I don't he, see... He he's, was he's, a good goalkeeper. And I think when Pep come in and said you can't play football you're not good enough for my team mm. I think that morally like I think that destroyed his confidence because mm. if, if you go back I've seen clips like there was that he made that ridiculous like double save from Messi in the Champions League game mm. and then Messi was like five mm. yards out yeah, yeah. So he, he, he has like, made good saves for us hard. he made a good but, save for us against Watford he, he does make good saves it's just that perhaps what we thought he might be bringing which would be the organisation the voice the leadership he hasn't quite yeah, brought hasn't and I think really for me that, that's yeah. a the, 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 the slightly disappointing thing his performances I've not really got a problem with but it's just has he bought as much leadership and organisation as we, we thought, thought he would because yeah. yeah you know that was my biggest criticism of Randolph last year but he didn't organise he didn't talk and at the moment Joe I mean, Hart is being funny much. though that's my main problem is I don't think anyone on that team's talking I don't think there's any leader yeah. out on that pitch no you're right you're right Zabaletta possibly you look noble at the fact when he's got, there but you've got Joe Hart Winston Reid and Zabaletta just in your back five Mm. And Winston is the only one doing anything. Yeah. Mark well, yeah, doesn't seem to talk anymore. No one in the midfield's talking. No. Like, there is no. There's, there is. There doesn't seem to be any real leadership. But, but we could. We could literally talk about this goalkeeper situation all night long. But there are players that aren't going to escape criticism because we need to criticise them a lot more. Um, I think. That, yeah. Because I could go on about Hart and Adrian all night long. Don't get me wrong. It, it's, it's, it's something that is really, really up there with me. Um, but the general consensus will seem to be Hart will start again. If he doesn't. More than Mario, so be it. And let's hope Adrian has a great game. Um, the debate will then be Rice or uh, Collins or Bonner. I think we, we can all we can all safely say that Reed will be definitely be in there. Um, if not, just as a starter, he'll be captain. If Noble doesn't start again, um, there is a talking point now on the 
fullbacks, um, something that I, that I think has been talked about quite a lot. Um, on Friday night, as much as I love Zabaleta, I think he's, he hasn't got the legs anymore. And you can see that he can't quite keep up with um, pacey uh, wingers and, and forwards. And it's, it's got to the point where I think second half, he was closing down um, the Leicester forwards quickly and just so he doesn't have to run after them, which is kind of like, OK, I'm going to admit defeat almost straight away. I've got to make it tackle, otherwise not. Um, you've, also got, you've also got a case for Creswell, who since the injury last pre-season um, hasn't been anywhere near the same player that he is. His crossing is nowhere near as good as it, as it was with, with his first two seasons. But then Masaraku's delivery was pretty poor on... So, to be fair, I think David Moyes outed well. the entire team that first half. He'd he done that at Sky Sports interview after the game. After yeah. the game, he said, like, our crossing in the first half in general was absolutely awful. The one thing for me is I don't think yeah. Creswell... Creswell was always more an attacking fullback than a defensive fullback. Yeah. He's always, even in that first season, he was better going forward than he was going back. Mm, and mm. if he's losing that ability to go forward, I think yeah, I think I think, I think he's, I think he's lost the bottle personally. I think he's lost the bottle to go past players. I think the only time you ever saw him really go go anywhere um, in attacking sense was when Leicester decided to half part the bus and the crowd were getting um, giving the players all they could um, backing wise and support wise. Um, I don't know about you guys, but you just we've been mentioning Masuaku. Um, I was over the moon to see him start in left wing. Um, I was I, honestly, I, I was on the train on the way to the game, and I was dreading the team coming out. And I was thinking, I'm not kind of at this point. I'd given up, not given up West Ham. I kind of gone, I'm going to see a football match, and if we win, it's a bonus. But I'm just, I practically laughed when Leicester scored the goal. I thought, here we go again. This is the same old, same old. But I was buzzing when that team come out, man for man, formation wise. Um, I was thinking this is basically the formation that for months and months and months almost every West Ham fan has been crying out for yeah. Creswell left back and Masuaku left wing and it was it, now going from that mentioning Masuaku he's apparently got criticism for his for his football for his game on Friday night I can understand some criticism I can't understand him getting a lot of criticism, criticism. for me um, there was things that, one of the only players in the team was willing to go past players, and he did go past players well. Um, he's got a bit of skill about him, which I think not a lot of our players have got in the team. Um, he's got a little bit about of a movement about him. A lot of you know, <coughs> there were times when he was well, practically playing as a centre midfielder, um, coming you know through the ranks and going past the whole Leicester defence like they were nothing. I think he, he had a good game on the face of it being a left back playing left wing and you're right we all wanted to see him do it we all have been craving that for a few weeks but the problem is you look at his end product and it just wasn't there you know all the way in the word and I'm not going to criticise him for that because he is a left back you know he's, he, he should be able to hit a few crosses and sooner or later you, you kind of hope one of them might reach the target but his delivery was poor you know he got into good positions but then we didn't make the most out of it um I think yeah. there's a question to be asked that if Antonio is fit, does he come back in on the left wing? And then which do you play at left back, Masaraku or Creswell? But I suspect that Moyes will probably start with both of them again. Creswell at left back, Masaraku yeah. on the wing, with Antonio on the bench to come on. I'm just, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make this case quickly. I'm thinking when you look at a guy like Masaraku who has hardly started, practically not started at all this season, it's mm. his first major start. Um He's basically a guy still looking to impress. So he hasn't got that kind of thing where I've had a few games now, I've got used to the way that this game's going. Um, I haven't got to impress everyone by doing a few bits of skill, trying to beat every player that I can. Um, and maybe if he had a few games under his belt, he wouldn't be so um, urging to get the crowd on, on his you know, on his side. Um, so, no, I am worthy yeah. of being in the team. Possibly uh, the case of trying too hard, you mean, though? Yeah, kind of that yeah. thing. And I think when it comes to push comes to shove, if I cross this ball now, is it the best decision, or can I beat this player more and get myself more more room? That's just the way I look at it. Um, Matt, what did you think of Masuaku's game? Yeah, see, I don't, I don't know if because I was at the games, or well, I don't know if it came across differently being in the ground to being on TV because I thought behind on out of it, he was our best player. Like, yeah, so oh, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah. some I've... of his crossing was poor. But I just I don't think I think the only guy that actually crossed well in the game was Alvich. I think Zabaleta's crossing yeah. wasn't great, and even was Creswell. You went first. No, you're but like right, you you're said, right. he was the only guy. Just call me. Because that was willing to go beyond anyone, and that, mm. that's the thing yeah. that oh, we yeah. just don't do as a team. No one in our team no. is prepared to make that third man run. 
be and that's why I think I would probably I would probably start him again in that same position on Wednesday. But if it's not, if if there's working. no end product and nothing's been delivered, yeah. if it's not working, then I'm going to tell you to come off the bench. Yeah, and I think no, Moyes will do the same as well. The thing I was more frustrated with was like Maswaku was getting down the line, sucking in the defender. He was knocking it back to Creswell just to whip it in. Like Creswell mm. had no one around him. He was like, I've done all the hard work. I've sucked in two players. Just cross mm. it in. Yeah. And mm. he just continually hit the first man. Mm. But the mm. one mm. good cross Creswell put in in that first half, he crossed in from like 35 yards. Mm. And he put it like, I think on, I think it was the cry header mm. when he headed it wide and probably should have scored. Mm. And that was from like 30 yards. That was like from 30 yards back. It wasn't near the heart. Mm. That wasn't near the box. Yeah. Any time yeah. anyone got in like in line with the box, the cross was just awful for me I would play Maswaku left back yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd drop Creswell I'd play okay. Alavich in front of him or even right. Antonio I'd play someone else in front of him just because I don't think Creswell's bringing anything to the team no I think that's, I, yeah, I, I personally think, I think, think Moyes won't I think he'll he'll mm. look at it like that first 11 did well against Leicester alright mm. he took us slow to get into the game but mm. he can probably see the stuff he's putting in is starting to work I agree and I, and I think Moyes is probably the kind of manager that will say to the players that until you let him down yeah. you're in the team yeah. and yeah. Masuaku definitely didn't let anyone down no, no. And, I, and, I, and I think even even across the board that's why maybe Ogbonna Ogbonna's probably the only change I would make but I think it'll probably be the same the same team yeah, that I mean, on, uh, on Wednesday if you're going to change a centre back you probably don't want to change a left back because you don't want to no. chop and change your back four the entire time mm. so if no, you're going to no, make no. change a back four you're going to make one change if I made one change it'd be Take a mm. Bonner out and put Rice. Or and if you put Rice in, then yeah, you want you want the experience of Creswell because Creswell will still be Next able to talk to him. Yeah, you don't yeah. know if Masuaku himself has that experience, has that confidence to be able to talk another player through the game. And I mm. think if you're bringing going to bring Rice in, then yeah, having him between Reed and Creswell is probably probably the best part for him. I think I think that obviously Moyes obviously sees him in training, and a big thing for me, for me if Masuaku's in against Leicester, then means that Moyes is looking in training and is impressed with these players because you just don't when you when you're new to a club, you kind of don't want to twist and turn too much. You're probably looking at it going, okay, Masuaku's got something I can use this. You know, we've got someone like Carroll up front who, who needs crosses, who, who will feed off that all day long. Um, by the way, viewers, this. This is meant to be an Everton preview. I know we're talking. I know. I know we're talking a lot about the uh, the Leicester game, um, but we're just talking about uh, previous games and informed players. But um, going from obviously the wingers and that, um, and out of which he has to start again against Everton. Yeah. Uh, out of ten performance against Leicester, what are we saying for that one? Does that does that does that guarantee that he'll he'll be? Um, I'd probably say he got like a seven, but I'd say that uh, seven, seven was the highest pushing, I mean. gave anyone in the team. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, for, for, for me, he's, uh... comes in, there's always a player that like that manager is like, that's my player, he's my guy, he's the guy I'm going to go to. And okay. it looks two games in that like an out of each is going to be Moise's guy. Like he's been the guy for me that stepped up since Moise's come in. He yeah. had a good yeah. hour or so against Watford. And then he actually pushed on further and proved even more in the game against Leicester. Yeah, although against Watford, I think he was probably guiltier than Kriate of, uh, of of missing a sitter. But you know, he's, yeah, I mean, he's I don't know. That, in... that second, the second save. I mean, the first one was deflected, and the second one he kicked it away. I, I don't know. For me, that was yeah, Gomez. It was a ridiculous. The, fir- the first one was a great save, but the second one, I just think, why try and flick it that close to the keeper? Just bury mm. it. Yeah, that's but what I, I could think. think as well. I, I, but that I, I could be quite fancy as well, though, because I would quite yeah. fancy him as first goal scorer. I think I think he started to find his stride, he started to get in the right positions, and I think I would fancy him as first goal scorer on Saturday, on Wednesday. Might have put a few um, on it myself. <laughs> <laughs> don't blame you, mate. Right, basically. Um, I just want to say, obviously, uh, apparently, I think you've got to leave now, Marcus. I have, unfortunately, mate. Yeah, I've got to shoot. Thank you very, so, uh, thank you very, very much for joining us, mate. Uh, no worries. No worries. Well, please don't be a stranger and come back. You'd be. Uh... No, I'll definitely be on the next one. Great, you know, one, especially mate. if Arnautovic has scored the first goal in a free all draw, then I'll be on <laughs> to review it. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, cheers, hello, guys. And come no on, you irons. Cheers, mate. Right, mate. Just uh, me and you now. <laughs> Right, let's make it work for Yeah, let's keep going. Um, okay. Right, something um, something I was really overjoyed with and I'm hoping that we stick with for Everton was the formation that's been talked about since um, the uh, end of last season. Um, it's been looked at as probably a, a future formation um, and I think when it came out, I was shocked, pleasantly shocked. Um, 
the midfield of Obiang, Kiai, holding midfielders, and Lanzini in front of them as an attacking midfielder, just behind the forward. Um, it didn't work massively brilliant against Leicester, um, as well as I would have hoped it would, but it's got massive potential. Um, do you see that as being uh, a potential um, match-winning formation against Everton, or do you think that oh. needs to change? I'm pretty sure that's the formation. That's like that's like Moyes' go-to formation in general. It's good, yeah. yeah and I, I agree. think the way that our team plays, at least at the moment, with who's available and the way we're mm. playing, I think that formation you're going to have to play like four-two-three-one because mm. mm. you've got those two guys supposed to be sitting to you know give some sort of extra protection to the back four. Mm. And the whole point is Lanzini middle is just then he can roam because people I know people have been saying maybe we should be playing Lanzini in the middle of like a two for a four-four-two. Yeah, I don't yeah. think Lanzini will sit. I don't think like I'm not saying anything against Lanzini because he's by far probably the best player in the squad. But I don't think he's got that mental I'll, discipline I, to no, just sit. I, he likes I, to roam. That's his best way to do it. Is like you know that number ten position where he can just roam around the pitch, mm. pick up the ball in spaces. Watching the game on Friday, I, I got the complete impetus that basically we we rely on him so much um, for creative creative play in the middle. There is literally no one in the team apart from Kiate if he makes a forward run that can beat players. Is nippy, uh, can get in those dangerous areas. Um, it looks like maybe he's lost a slight yard of pace, but maybe maybe that's just down to the fact that he hasn't been working very hard under Bilic, and maybe it's all going to change under Moyes. Um, he's one of them players that you know. The free kicks for me weren't fantastic um, against Leicester, but I'm not too sure that he's going to, you know, he's, he's, he's obviously going to be our free kick taker. And hopefully um, he can improve and we can improve on how we attack those set pieces that we have. Obviously, before I did the, um, the, call, the corner, uh, corner assist for Kiata's goal, which was which was massive. So I can't knock him for that. That was fantastic. Um, but, it, I mean, I take it, you know, we're going to, that, would you would you change that midfield in any way for Everton or just just keep it? I, same, I, don't, same? I don't think you can. I mean, the only thing you no. could do is maybe drop one of Obiang or Kiara for Noble. Because the but, consensus, I mean, the, the consensus I've seen on social media a lot is the fact that Obiang has flattered to deceive, um, especially in the last game, and he doesn't deserve to start against Everton. And Noble should come. I in mean, his he's team. passing. He's passing. The problem is, his passing at the start of the game was awful, and he sort of it was. Like, a lot, yeah. like a lot of the players, he sort of grew into the game. Mm, mm. But I mean, Obiang, even if he even if he gets the pass wrong, he will look up and try and knock. Like a sixty-yard ball across the pitch, going yeah, forward yeah. to like the opposite wing. He's got his Whereas I sit like halfway up in the upper tier and Bobby Moore, and I can tell you before Noble's got that ball exactly what he's going to do with it. He will get the ball. He'll take yeah. a touch. He'll take another touch. He'll look up. Like the pass think, is there. Yeah. Like the pass will come into him. All he needs to do is take one touch and pass it on again. Which I think as Obi grew into the game, he realised that that's all he needs to do. His mm. job is to just move the possession on. Whereas think... Noble will move the possession on. Five touches later, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, the, exactly. and then all you're doing is you're already putting the guy under pressure before he's got the ball. And if he's not Lanzini, Lanzini's got the skill mm. to not worry about that guy closing down. Oh, I can just knock it round him and we're away again. Whereas mm. if you're passing that dart to Kiate, no offense to Kiate, but he's not that sort of a skillful player. He wants it in yeah, front of him yeah. to run onto him, mm. and Noble won't give it. It's I, it's, it's I, a think, I think I think Obiang said that training with Moyes, and I think he's probably been programmed to this is how you've got to play it. At all times, and you've got to try and make this pass um, over and over and over again, and that's kind of his mentality. He's got to kind of spray these passes. He's really nip passes really quickly as well. You can't dilly dally on the ball. You've got to get these passes out of your feet straight away, and maybe that's causing him to just panic a little. Or it might be. It might be that he's not like he's not completely comfortable with doing it yet. But it's something he's not new. It might be something new he's being asked to do. He's not comfortable with it yet. But pretty like I most think, players, <laughs> especially under I, the new I think team. Obiang will do it better than Noble. Where I can't. I yeah. can't for me. I can't see Noble spraying passes no. about the pitch. No, no. But uh, I mean, a game against Everton might be a game to play Noble. Like it might be because that that just, is one of the games where you're going to need you're going to need to roll the sleeves up and get stuck in. Yeah, I'm just I, I personally wouldn't go with Obiang. I'm just saying what I've seen on social media. Um, it, right, it's a well, difficult choice, but I mean, like we're not we're not managers, and we no. like we're the fans. So David Moyes just come in, but even we're sitting there now saying we we can't predict the team. Yeah. So no. what the hell is David Moyes going to do? No, exactly. <laughs> I mean, we we can we, predict we can predict it to a point, but I think there are certain holes that uh, are going to be in there. But the main this is this is the main talking point for me. Um, I don't get the abuse. Um, the kind of consensus, the anti-Carroll crew 
that is um, out there for for for, 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 folk. Um, for me. I'll just say this: um, I think he's harsh with the comments he made um, towards the fans leaving early a little while back. Um, maybe maybe he was taking it. I mean, the state he made was right, but the timing of it was entirely wrong. I get what he's saying because point point in case was like you said the game at the weekend we got behind the guys mm. and the, the the effort levels and the energy lifted because we got That's behind incredible. them mm. stayed to the end and they were pushing and pushing and pushing and just couldn't get the boy over the line at the end but we weren't but saying weren't it after we've been time, smashed 4-1 yeah. by, by Liverpool is yeah. fucking pointless because exactly. there's no point moaning at us leaving 15 minutes to go I mean by the way anyone that's been to the ground you know but I do you, you're fucking queuing up for like an hour yeah. to walk 10 minutes yeah. to get back to the tube station Andy Carroll's all right. He's fucking off the pitch after ninety minutes, sitting in a dressing room, getting his fucking dinner, and he gets in a car and drives off. Yeah, they haven't got our problems. He's probably they fucking got left the ground problems. before I've even got on the tube. Like, exactly. You know I mean? They they they're in their own little world, their own little bubble. Um, but saying I, it I, after a four-one loss doesn't matter because they weren't going to fucking get a four-four draw out of that game. Like it was just. Right. But I get the point people are making is that he's never fit. So this is like the first time while he's been fit for a considerable number of games. He hasn't scored yet this season. Mm. And I think maybe those couple of things people were getting a bit edgy about him and then the comments just like completely overloaded people's opinion. Mm. I like him. I don't think he's really had the service yet that he needs and it's not being funny, it's not rocket science. We know the service Carol needs. He needs them yeah. crosses in. Yeah. And like we said, the game at the weekend, he didn't get them crosses. No. But no. David Moyes sets up to play crosses. That's like that's David Moyes' game. It's much like Allardyce's. It's getting down the wings and put crosses yeah. in the box. It's, Carroll's one of the players that I don't think we've ever truly utilised very much and it's kind of one of the balances with I don't know him as a bloke and whatever we don't know any of the players as personally at all but as a player I genuinely think he's isolated um, a lot of the time and he does really well I mean, you, you talk about a guy who normally has about two or three defenders on him at any one time um, especially when it's, when it's an aerial battle um, he's not been great with his elbows and causing fouls lately and that's something he's got to curb um, and I think hopefully he's taken that from the Leicester games. He didn't seem to be doing that very much. Yeah. Um, but you've got to, you know, yeah. where forwards are concerned, you've got a guy who's still in our books, whether he wants to be it or not, Sacco. Um, I think players are kind of sort of, all the fans are kind of sort of not warming to him, but kind of going, hope you here, do the job you're here to do, and then leave in January if you want yeah. to. Um, so there's that there's there's added concept that well, where we can go, well, yeah, I don't have to play Carroll in this game, we can go with Sacco. This guy a little bit of an unpredictable one. Um, and let's get this out of the open now. We've, I've completely given up with them giving Martinez a chance. For me, that's that's. If it happens, I'll be over it's, the bloody moon. But I think was it before the game at the weekend when mm. David Moyes got questioned about it in his pre-match press conference? And yeah, he said, was they were so like, awesome. "What's Martinez got to do to get in the team?" And he said, "Well, he's not got to have Carroll, Ayu, and Saka in front of him." Sure. Mm. And that's another one as well. Ayu, Ayu, like, which. But, Give him a chance. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Like if you if you bring him off the bench for twenty minutes, he doesn't do anything. And at least then David Moyes can turn around and say, "Look, I gave him a chance. It didn't work out." I'm just mm, listening. Mm, I'm, but, I'm, on a, I'm doing a short bit. Thank you. Keep going. I mean, I, I, said, I, you've got you've got Sakurayu and Carroll between the three of them. You should see goals there. So I can see why he's uh, not giving him a chance. But the fact that they're not scoring, a Martinez is. is mm. You know, as a, you know, it's like if you look at a player's defined job, the centre forward, your job is put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the only you, guy up front that's doing it for us is are you Hernandez? Yeah. Hernandez is still injured. He's not back on Wednesday. Mm. He might be back on no, the weekend. No. Um, that's all so the shame. Out. So the only guy out of those three, Shell, that, can I call you back? Uh, David Moyes has said the only guy yeah. scoring goals is are you. So do you play are you up front on Wednesday? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the, that's the, that's the thing. Are you still there? And for me, he's not a winger. I played very well the other night against Leicester, but for me, he's an out and out centre forward, and that's what we've got to try and utilise him in. Yeah. Um, but. Okay. I mean, this, they, this, they're, this... They're, if they sit up with two at the back, they'll have Jaggy Elk and Williams. So, <laughs> do you play Carroll and play long balls into the three of them, or do you play Ayu and play balls behind them? Because Jaggy Elk and Williams are like <laughs> slow as fucking motor like, Yeah, exactly. They're like a tanker turning. It's, it's, it's that running in porridge. Um, so, let's, let's get this out of the open now. What, what, what is your. If you were the manager now, if you were David Moyes, what would be your team, your 11 you would put out to start against Everton? Heart. Zabaleta, Breed, Rice, Creswell, Obi and Kuarte, mm. Onaovic, <laughs> Lanzini, Antonio, are you? Okay. You, you, you're 100%? 50 no, 50? I, I, just, I have no friend. idea. Like, yeah. 
Uh, it's 11 players in his formation. Fair enough. No, I mean, you could say maybe Antonio has not been fit yet, so leave him on the bench and play Masuaku and bring Antonio on later in the game. Right, right. Maybe, maybe say that, maybe some Masuaku instead. And then mm. the centre forward, like we said, the centre forward option is like a roll of the dice. Mm, I don't, mm. I, like, that's what I think, but I think Moyes will play the exact same formation mm. and team that started against Leicester. Because right. they didn't do anything wrong. I mean, well, maybe barring Obono. You could say Obono did something wrong, maybe he could be dropped. It's, it's it's one of them. I think it's it, it's it's different game, different situation. But I think the consensus will be that we were the same team. Um, I think I'd go with the same thing for for team wise. I would just I would replace Obona with Collins if he's fit, um, and if not Rice, because I think Obona needs a wake up call. Um, I, I, yeah. Nothing against the guy. No, he's, he, he clearly wants to do well for West Ham, but I don't think he's up for the job at the minute. Um, I wouldn't start Antonio, so I would keep the same same team. Um, and I will keep Carroll. So basically, for me, it's the same team: Masuaku in the left wing, Creswell on the left back. Um, possibly, maybe even in a sign another left back in January because I'm not too, not too sure about that competition there. Um, your score prediction, Matt. Let's, they've done the teams now. Let's get my score prediction. Come on, this is the big one. This is the one that I hate. It's one that, that Anton normally gives me. So uh, I'm giving I'm you. Go... Now. We'll win it two-one. Right. Can't take a clean sheet. We, no we can't defend. Neither can I. Okay, okay. Uh, it's going to be a nervy 2 1, or it's going to be like 5 4. Because it's neither team good defender to save their lives. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm going to change my team slightly. Actually, I'm going to put Adrian in front of Hart. I forgot about that, so that was my bad. I, you know, Adrian's my boy, I'm not going, to, not going to change that. My score prediction was probably, it's probably going to be something like I was mentioned earlier 4 3, 5 3, yeah, 3 3, you can 4 see, 4. It's even going to be a really like tight 2 1 or 1 0 sort of game. Yeah. Where one team yeah. nicks it. If if, oh. if Allardyce is in, it's going to be minus one goals. I think it'd be that it'd be that bad <laughs> score wise. I, I uh, if Unsworth is still there, I don't think they'll get him in before Wednesday. No, like, no, I, I can't see I that. I can't either. see it happening, especially no. after they turned him down a month ago, and now they've come back in for him. Like every, one thing, Big Sam isn't is he doesn't forgive easy. Like no, he turned, he'd be out, the fact yeah. that he turned them down out of blood. He, he wasn't like he wasn't that caliber of manager they wanted. He wasn't you know that we want to go on to the next level. And they turned Allardyce down, and now after that awful performance against Southampton, it was awful. Mm, They've mm. gone crap. We are actually. We was like looking at us before we got yeah. Moyes in. It was like that. Was, that was yeah. how bad it was. It was like mirror yeah. image. It was. It was that scary, especially with the defending concerned. Um, yeah, so my, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for three three. So that why not just just put, three, sit three. down for three three. Let's go. Let's what you know. Let's be a bit stupid here. Let's go for it. But it might come off. You never know. I'm a bit better. Two, off, I'll like, say two one win. Stuff. Fair I'm enough, mate. Go quiet. Two one. Um, right, I think that just about covers everything for now. Um, and uh, I, I just want to give a personal shout out to uh, Friday night um, Dave Walker of West Ham Way. Um, it was kind of a shock and a surprise to see um, West Ham sort of social media page um, on the national front on live TV. Um, but he carried himself well, and I think you know we're all in it for the same thing: the love of West Ham. Um, and we all want the best for the club, and we only do this stuff for the love of the game. We're not, getting, we're not, you know, we're not in for this for much ourselves. We just do it for the love of the game, um, and we'd all like to be in the same position that you were in yourself. Um, so it's, it's nice to see the fact that pages ain't just sitting there um, and waffling onto themselves on social media. They are actually getting a chance to um, be heard to um, a, a wider audience, to uh, a global audience as well as it was because it was on Sky Sports. So uh, well done for that. Um, but yeah, um, it's been it's kind of almost been more like a Leicester preview than it has been an Everton preview. Um, but hopefully we've covered most of the things we need to cover. Um, I think uh, any first you want to add to this, Matt? Uh, <laughs> right I think maybe try to beat the so. Everton team, but they're struggling like we are. I think it's like, one of them things. Uh, I think I think that you could go through the whole Everton team. You could go through their, their dangerous players, but I mean. Sigerson scored a great goal on the weekend. They still lost four um, one, and it, it's it, their their confidence will be shot, but they're a bit of a bogey team for us. Um, so maybe yeah, maybe maybe they're they're going to have dangerous players, and it's going to be our uh, our downfall. Um, I mean, do you see there really be any 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 real dangerous players from Sigerson or the like? I was thinking the ass, but of course he's he's banned because he's the guy that sort of yeah. turned their season round. Mm, mm. That one game, yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's it's one game scoring goals and the other just putting it about. Um, it's it's going to be. A week. I, I can't actually see Everton keeping the same team 
as, as his fencing game. I think he's going to make a lot of changes to that one. Or could be wrong. It could be the same tra- same same team, and I'm completely talking out of my ass. Uh, but well, so I think uh, they got a few injuries from the last game. So well, they're injuries. Just players going and don't want to play anymore. <laughs> oh, it could it could be that. Do you know what I mean? Like, it could yeah. be. Do you get any manager in? I, I, I ain't interested, which might have been the same case of West Ham and Billich. Um, but yeah, okay, so I think that covers everything. Um, thank you for watching. Hopefully, um, we're in a good mood come Wednesday night um, after the 90 minutes, and um, hopefully, we're a bit higher at the table. Um, I've been Luke. This has been Matt. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we do love your views and your comments. Please keep them coming in. Um, and hopefully, we're. Um, Gonna look forward to a positive result Wednesday night. So uh, I've been Luke, this is Matt, and we are Iron United.